The Goat Isles is back with my updated NFL rookie rankings after three games. Jaden Daniels went off last week on Monday Night Football. He is now in the rankings. Let's see where he ranks along with the rest of my top 10 rookies heading into week four. Coming in at number 10, the Texans rookie corner Kamari Laster, who did make the list last week, moved down just a little bit. His best game still through three weeks was week two against the Bears, where he added an interception, almost two actually, one got called back, but kind of looks like a, maybe a future lockdown corner of the NFL. I do think teams will try to throw his way a little bit more, so we'll see uh, how, how that goes for teams if he plays well with that type of pressure and or even better then he's going to be ranked even higher going forward number nine the eagles rookie corner quinion mitchell who was on the list after week one week two he just dropped off and now back on after a really good performance against the saints more defense than expected from the eagles in that game that was huge gave him a chance to win that game so the young corner has looked really good a little more physical than expected but well, you see him the way he breaks on the ball and breaks up some passes as well. Uh, that's where he really stands out, and that's where he stood out in college. So good to see it translating to the next level. He's at number nine. Number eight, the Saints rookie offensive tackle, Taliese Fuaga, who's been on the list every single week so far. He did take a little bit of a dip in pass protection, but still has been very efficient, very solid for the Saints. And their offense, again, the offensive line was expected to be one of the worst in football. It hasn't been close to that. It's been, it's been pretty solid. A big part of it is because the rookie who's been uh, outstanding so far for New Orleans. Number seven is the Jags rookie wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. who's made the list every single week so far. He is dropping a little bit each week, but he's been productive every week. He's better than Gabe Davis, that's for sure, so that's good. A lot of it's on Trevor Lawrence. He's struggling a little bit, doesn't have a lot of time, but maybe Brian Thomas Jr. would be a little bit better because he is getting open. He Even when he's not open, he makes big grabs, makes big plays. So we're like, And I think they're going to try to target him more and more going forward. Gabe Davis has been a letdown to them. He can't really get separation. Just doesn't look like he's fully healthy. So Thomas Jr. should be the guy, and I can see him kind of climbing back up those rankings towards the top again if he gets going. These receivers look so good. Number six is going to be Joe Alt, who has made the list every single week. He dropped down a little bit this week, had his hands full with TJ Watt when he was helped on a double team or didn't have to block Watt, Watt by himself. He did really, really solid. When he was one-on-one, -on -one, kind of in an island and pass protection when they were trying to come back uh, with Watt. He had some issues. It is TJ Watt, and he is a rookie, and he's actually a rookie with a ton of upside because he's really hasn't played the position long. Coming out of high school, he was a tight end and defensive end, so he's he's we could see he's going to be a special. He's already a special player, but he's going to be very, very special. A little bit of a drop this week again. He did play TJ Watt. Uh, not the greatest outing, but not an awful outing at the same time, so he easily still makes the cut. Number five is Brock Bowers, who missed the, just missed the cut in week one, easily made it last week, makes it again this week, stays consistent, is productive. Raiders had a tough outing last week, but Brock Bowers still, I mean, caught the ball pretty well, was productive, good after the catch. He's a mismatch weapon, but he's more importantly a guy you really have to focus on in the game plan and even pre-snap where he's lined up to which make sure we don't put too much of a mismatch on him. So he, he is a problem and he's going to continue to be a problem. He comes in at number five. Number four is the Tennessee Titans first round offensive tackle, J.C. Latham, who continues to climb. Missed the cut in week one, made it in week two, and climbed up even more. He's at number four, a really solid outing for him. Very much impressive. He's Definitely in the case for the best offense alignment out of the rookie offense alignment, of course. That's going to be a battle. There's quite a few of them that look really good, but uh, guys that I had ranked at the top of my draft board was was Joe Law, Joe Alt, excuse me, and then J.C. Latham. So uh, I'm happy to see these two guys, along with Fuaga, who everyone was kind of high on, uh, you know, duking it out at the top here for the top rookie offensive lineman. Number three is the Commanders rookie quarterback and looks like their franchise quarterback, Jaden Daniels, after that insane performance on Monday Night Football. He actually was not ranked before, and now he gets on the ranking. Not only gets on the rankings, but he goes all the way up to number three, and he was close to being number two. I thought number two put... Has a little bit better of a resume, but Daniels has been productive all the way through. It did take till week three, which is not a big deal, to get his first passing touchdown, but he racked up multiple touchdowns. Best part was how efficient he was. I don't know what the best part is, actually, because he was so consistent, efficient, accurate, only incompleted two passes, so you can argue that. You could argue the, the ability to keep plays alive, but not taking off and running right away, which he was productive in week two, but there was so much of dropping my eyes, dropping his eyes the second he takes a three-step drop and looking to run. 
This week, he gave it the plays chances and the playmakers chances, and it was awesome. So keeping plays alive, but looking to be a passer first and knowing when to pass and knowing when to run. Or that last touchdown pass that won them the game to Terry McLaurin under heavy pressure against the Blitz on third down took a uh, massive hit and dropped a pearl into the bucket. So I can't pick out my favorite part is, but it looks like the commanders got themselves. They found themselves a quarterback here. Really good signs. Uh, really just all about staying healthy and yet yeah, do not drop those eyes. Give everything a chance. You have playmakers. When you play better, your playmakers look great, just like we saw this week, and it's a really, really, really good sign. Cause it seems like it's harder to play quarterback in today's NFL, looking at the quarterbacks around the league. You know, so it's a, it's a really good sign. What the other rookie quarterbacks are doing, it's a really good sign that he's already breaking out. So he comes in at number three. If he puts together more games like that, I mean, that's, a, that's too much pressure maybe to say, like, he's got to put more games, like, because that was ridiculous. But if he's, like, in that range or close the rest of the year, I mean, every quarterback has hiccups, even Patrick Mahomes. But you get my point. For the most part, it's going to be hard for him not to climb up and be number one. He's already at three. It could be like, because, spoiler, Malik, Malik Neighbors is still number one, but it's going to, maybe it reminds me of, like, CJ Stroud versus Puka Nakua. And I'm not saying Daniels is Stroud. I'm not ready to hop on that yet. Um, you know, and, and I'm not necessarily saying neighbors is Puka. I think he could be better actually, but point is Puka was so good and so deserving of the rookie of the year, but then you have this quarterback that is just insane. So Stroud has to win it. So could we, if he continues, it's only been one game and he's been okay besides the one game, but just my point of, are we going to have a controversy? Is it going to be interesting? But if he continues to play like that, He's going to soar up, and there's not really too much soaring to do. He's already at number three, so it's good to see a quarterback make the list. Very interesting quarterback class. I, I can't wait to see the other two. The other two stepped up maybe a tiny bit last week. I'd say more so Knicks, but Caleb Williams has so much upside. I think he'll break out at any time. And the three quarter, first-round quarterbacks that aren't playing, I'm so curious to see how their career, the whole class, how, how do they all pan out? It's going to be very interesting to look at a little bit down the road here. Number two, Marvin Harrison Jr. with another productive outing and another outing with a touchdown. So definitely a threat, especially down the field. Knows how to get open, knows how to work the sideline, the body control. I mean, that's what stood out at Ohio State. It's kind of a, it's kind of where those Ohio State receivers specialize. The uh, LSU receivers are, you know, maybe a little flashier, crazy after the catch. Uh, but that seems like an Ohio State receiver thing. The body control is always off the charts and. He shows that, especially along the sideline with the toe, you know, the toe drags, keeping the feet in. And he's shown it again this week. Week one was a little off, and obviously week two, we talked about it last week. I felt like he played pissed off, like he had something to prove, and I love that. And he went off again. And then in week three, uh, he once again was very productive, did some damage. The offense overall couldn't do much. They couldn't run the ball, so they were forced into obvious pass situations. And you expected a slot receiver to go off of the Cardinals because that's where the Lions struggle, but... Yeah, I mean, those guys weren't consistent enough, so it was a, a lot of it was on, Marvin, uh, in terms of the receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr. So if they add, and they got guys you think could be pretty good as a slot receiver. They're, they're not bad. They're good, really, really good rotation guys, but if they got a legit, or if Mike Wilson develops a little bit more, but a legit, you know, like a first round or second round slot receiver to pair with Harrison Jr., that's only going to elevate the entire offense. So just a little bonus thought I had. Number one, not much of a surprise at all. Should be everyone's number one because he's been very consistent. Even week one, he was very, very, very productive. He was just even more productive in week two, in week three. Week three, he had pretty good stats, over 70 yards, but I'm more impressed with the impact, like the presence when the game's on the line or when you need a conversion or Daniel Jones throws a awkward pass maybe because he has to sometimes you have to throw awkward passes and it's super high on the sideline he gets it comes down crazy athleticism and body control and footwork everything and then same thing on that touchdown the play before Daniel Jones threw overthrew a touchdown and the next play was about to do it again the neighbors but he went up and caught it kept the feet in came down touchdown and they won by one score as well and the Browns were kind of threatening to come back and they were kind of being a little sloppy otherwise maybe they could have but Possibly, but the Giants clutched up and just kind of my point is going back to that clutch, clutch touchdown. That could have been the difference in that one. So there you have it. Malik Neighbors, no surprise, stays at number one. We got a good battle between maybe a quarterback now and other receivers like Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, you know, trying to battle Malik Neighbors for the top spot here. And there is a recap of the top 10 with the movements, of course. Uh, you know, some most of the time on this list when I've been doing it over the years, guys have been moving down mainly because 
Well, yeah, maybe their performance is a little bit, but it's usually more so because other guys have to climb up and it kind of forces them down. Other guys played insane. So uh, all, all the rookies playing well. We're just picking out 10, but some guys that just missed the cut. Watch out for Bucky Irving. That's a explosive running back, and he displayed that a little bit in the past game against the Broncos during when they were trying to come back at least. Andrew Phillips of the Giants was looking really, really solid. He, he just made the list last week, uh, but he only played seven or so snaps. I believe it was seven this past week due to injury and he's going to be out tonight, Thursday night football. Um, so, yeah, snaps is a big thing for me because we're only picking out ten, uh, but the way he's played when he's been on the field it has been pretty good, but was number eight last week. You, know, you play very, very, very limited amount of snaps while other guys are playing a bunch of snaps and playing great, so that's going to drop you out. Uh, Zach Frazier's been good for the Steelers in terms of center, more so at the run blocking. Uh, Leatu Latu's on the climb. He had a big strip sack last week against the Bears for the Colts, and Javon Buller of the Packers has been looking very solid as well. Just realize I'm, flo I'm floating here. There's nothing below me. That's good stuff. Um, but that wraps up the rookie rankings. Well, I love to see what changes... Every single week, who who makes the cut? We love the quarterback getting up there. Love to see that. Can't wait for the other quarterbacks to take off even more. Mitchell's been in and out. He bent back in. Uh, so I'm just very, very curious to see. You know, J.C. Latham's been the biggest climber. Uh, made it last week. Made it another big step up this this week. I'm excited about him because a lot of people doubted him. I love the, you know, that a physical, a big, bully, physical offense tackle could still work in today's that kind of the more of the footwork, the quickness, the athleticism type era. Uh, so pretty good to see that everything's going bad with the Titans, but not Latham. So there's a positive there, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Check out all of our week four videos. We got tons of them. Predictions, takes more. We have shorts as well. Check it out. Subscribe, turn notifications on. It's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.